Hey, what's up guys? Today we're gonna show you how to install and use the software on the Corsair K70 Champion Series keyboard. So the first thing you need to do is go to Corsair.com, go to software, and get the IQ software. They have it in Mac or Windows. So once you get the software installed and running, you should be greeted with a screen like this. And at the top left here, this is your profile this here is the keyboard that is detected with all of the settings you can customize. And if your keyboard is not being detected, then just try to unplug it and replug it back in and it should show up. And then on the bottom here, we have sensors. There, these are things like you can show your fan speed of your graphics card and the temperature. And if I click add, you can see you know what they look like pretty interesting stuff and then up here these are some default colors that you can have on your keyboard so if i push this you don't see it but on my screen my keyboard's being all rainbowy if i push this the keyboard is being all blue in the corsair blue brand color we're gonna first start off with the profiles and let's say a good way to use these profiles is you can have say like a work mode and then let's say you want like a gaming mode. I'm gonna make my gaming red and I'm gonna call it gaming mode. You can link an app to where it automatically switches to gaming mode if the app is open. So a good one might be like Steam. So you can say like go to your C drive, go to your program files, go to Steam. And then once the, you can select this one here, open and then create. So anytime the Steam application is open, it's going to uh, automatically switch to gaming mode. So let's actually customize the work profile. So with work, maybe I don't want these rainbow colors. Maybe I want just like a solid blue color just so it's less distracting and I can just focus more. So now we can customize the way our work profile looks. Now that we're here, we can see that we have a few different settings we can customize. And starting off with the key assignments, these are the keys you can adjust in the software. So maybe you want to create like an assignment and assignments are what the key actually does when you click it. So let's say you want to open an application when you press a specific key. So what you want to do is you go to launch an app and you can see some of the apps here. Um, let's say I want to launch my Brave browser. I'm going to push here or you can launch a specific application and you can navigate to it. But let's say I want to open a Brave application, which is my browser. I'm going to go to google.com. And then once that's selected, I have this uh, assignment where it launches the browser. And I'm gonna rename that just so it's easier to keep track of things. Launch Brave Browser. So I'm gonna click enter. And now if I select this, it's gonna, this is a, what a command that I created is gonna do. And I can assign this to any key. So let's say I want my browser to open when I push the up arrow key. So what I would do is I would select this launch Brave browser and I would push the up arrow key. And we can see now it says the up arrow launches this. So if I go here and push up, you can see that my Brave browser just launched. Pretty cool stuff there. Let's say you want to add another shortcut. Maybe you have some text you type a lot, like, sup guys, there goes another one. So maybe now when you click the right arrow key, you have this thing that fires off that says sup guys. And that's gonna be, let's rename this just so it's easier to manage this stuff. If you are pretty heavy on these uh, uh, shortcuts. So this, you can see right, it's gonna fire this off. So if I, I just do it right here, if I push right arrow key, it's a sub guys. And you can see it spams it as you click it. So that's how these shortcuts work. And you can create a few different ones. You can have a switch profiles, you can create a macro. So that's how these key assignments work. And if you ever wanna add a new command, just click this plus button and you can do a few different things. You can have mouse shortcuts like increase or decrease your DPI. Maybe you want that. Uh, you can have media controls, pause, play, adjust volume. Maybe you want to switch profiles. Whatever you want to do, you can do it with the assignments here. Now, the next thing we're going to cover is the lighting effects. The hardware key assignments are similar to the key assignments. They just are have slightly different settings in there. But the light settings, light effects, these are pretty much how you customize the lighting effects on your keyboard. And you can really get into depth on this. Here's some presets where you have different rainbow patterns, color shift, how the keyboard just kind of shifts between colors. You can have a pulsing effect, 
which is more like a breeding kind of cycling between different colors. Anyways, and there's a lot of different uh, key or lighting uh, patterns that you can play with here. And if you really want to get into custom light settings, you can just click the custom setting and you can really mess around with a lot of these uh, light settings. Now the performance, these are simple things that you can do. Like if your Windows key lock is on, you can have the keyboard glow in a different pattern. And when it's off, you can you know, have it do something else. Pretty straightforward stuff there. And then if we go to the device settings, this little thing pops up and you can check for updates here. You can adjust your polling rate on how fast the keyboard actually registers your clicks. You have some debounce settings here that you can customize. And then you can have your tournament backlight color. And on the back of the keyboard, there's a little switch where you can have it on tournament mode. If you want to know more about that, I did do a full review on how that works. So be sure to check that video out. And yeah, that's pretty much the settings on this keyboard. Pretty cool keyboard overall, lots of customization settings, and you can really get into depth with this thing. You can have different profiles. And if you've ever used software for keyboards or mice, a lot of it is fairly similar. And I do like the Corsair software because it is fairly easy to use and navigate around. And I do like how you can create a lot of custom shortcuts and macros and you can really customize this keyboard to do practically whatever you want, which is really cool. So if you are looking for a keyboard with really customizable software, this is gonna be an awesome keyboard to consider. And if you wanna see my review on this keyboard, I'm gonna leave a link down of that down in the description below where you can see more of a hardware review on how this thing actually feels, what the mechanical switches feel like, and just my overall thoughts on what I think of the keyboard. That's gonna be down in the description below. And with all that being said, thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one.